back to the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Com Rich Walsh alongside Paul Zeiss. We're taking your phone calls, 412-575-2600 on the Bordas and Bordas hotline. If you need a roof, make sure you call Ireland Contracting, the best in the business. Their number, 1-800-NEW-ROOF. They do anything you need. 1-800-NEW-ROOF is their number. And that's why they are number one in Pittsburgh. Uh, before we go to phone calls, Paul, I want to ask you real quick that uh, what does it say about Narduzzi and maybe the state of the Pitt program that this will be number four offensive coordinator for him in his first four years? Well, you, I mean, I don't know that I read that much into it. I mean, you, you lost Jim Chaney to, to Georgia, I mean, to, the, to an SEC team. He lost Matt Canada for a huge offer from LSU. Uh, I'm trying to think of who's the th who's the Sean Watson. Who was the four? You said this is four. This will be number four coming up. Oh, yeah. And Sean Watson, he fired. I mean, I, I, I try not to read too much into that. I think the bottom line is every situation is different. Um, again, Jim Cheney had a chance to go to the SEC, go to Georgia. Same he's, with Canada. He's, 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 he's uh, coaching in the SEC championship game. And for a team that's, you know, ranked number one, he's been in BCS Bowls. He got a big raise. Canada got a huge raise. I, I don't read that much into it. I mean, Watson, he brought in. He thought it was a guy that would be here for a long time because it was a good, you know, one of his friends and somebody yeah. that he fits. In. The guy didn't get the job done. So, I mean, that's part of the business, just like in the Steelers and Joey Porter. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about that? You, uh, what are the changes that you would expect here? I don't know. I mean, I, it's to Keith me, Butler. To me, I think this one probably sends a very clear message that they're going to do business differently, that, yeah. that, that, that they're going to try and change maybe some of the culture around the team. They're going to, you know, they've got a guy who wasn't exactly the most professional person when it came to, you know, being a coach. And it's kind of like, well, you know, we've got a lot of, we, we've got enough numbskulls in the locker room. We don't need one of our coaches to be, you know, a guy who's out there getting into, you know, whatever happened at, you know, his, his kids' football games, yeah. getting into a situation in the south side, the, the whole nonsense with, the, you know, even though it benefited them field and getting into a basically a fight with Pac-Man and the, you know and whatever but I mean the bottom line is it sends a message that they're going to go in a uh, uh, trying to go in a different direction and maybe change some of the things that have held them back that's to me what it is I, I I don't know that Joey Porter is a great coach or not a good coach when it comes to the actual coaching but in terms of his professionalism and in terms of the fact that he never seemed to really understand he's a coach and no longer a player yeah. You know, I think they wanted to just send that message, and that's why this was the first one. Your colleagues reporting, Jerry Dulac, Ed Bouchette, more changes to come. Uh, what would you guess? Keith Butler? Do you think Jerry O's safe? I'm, I'm trying to think of guys that potentially See, it's no hard, one it's on the offensive side of the ball, I don't think. It's would. hard to guess what, you know, what's going to happen. It's, I mean, it's hard to speculate who's going to. I mean, the guy that everybody thinks should go is Keith Butler. To me, the reason that you, you, you do that is because, again, I think you're trying to change – the culture. The culture. And I think that, you know what, that defense is kind of antiquated. It's been around for so long. Um, it's a different NFL. You know, I, yeah. you need to find, bring somebody in that's got new ideas, that's got a fresh approach, that maybe even will change the scheme completely, you know, to, to a more modern scheme. I mean, there's a lot of different things that you can do uh, if you move on from Keith Butler. But, again, he's, he, you know, they, they don't like to let go of those guys that are, you know, longtime guys. Yeah. All right, to the phone calls. Let's go out to Mike in Oakland. What's up, Mike? Mike Hello? Here? Yeah, hey, Mike. Richie, what's going on, man? How you been? Good. How about you? Uh, good. Miss you, miss you around here. You know, it's not the same when you're not uh, answering some calls. Well, I've been in El Paso. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. You know, and, you know. glad that uh, Watson's gone. That's not what I called about, but, uh, you know, that offense was terrible. So it can't get any, can't get any worse, in my opinion, you know? But, um, listen, I, I call and I want to get – I'm sorry, what's that? No, I'm here. I'm here. Go oh, ahead. Okay, sorry. There's some technical issues, I think. Uh, I want to get a, make a comment and get a question and get your thoughts. Um, here's the thing. What I read about why A.B. got upset at, at Big Ben, I don't, I don't, I'm not at all condoning what A.B. did after the fact, but I would be a little annoyed as well. Ben's not even practicing on Wednesday. He's sitting out, and A.B., he's a veteran also. Why is he practicing if Ben's not practicing? So then he's telling a, a, a Brown to run, a diff, run the route again because he didn't do it right or something. I would get annoyed also. I mean, Ben's not even practicing, and he's telling the, the, the best receiver in the game to run the route better. I, I don't think it's right, and I, and I would be upset as well. Well, you know what, Mike? I don't want to disagree with you here, and I don't know what you're going to have to say about this, Paul, but, um, you know, I think Ben is more of a coach 
as well as a, as a quarterback. And if he wants one of his guys to run it again, I think you would, you would guess that maybe his teammates would comply um, if they think that they need to run it again, whether it's A.B.'s fault or someone else's fault. Um, you want to win, right? This is a team game. You want to win, so you got to do what it takes to win. I think Ben's a hypocrite because Ben expects to be treated a certain way because he's a veteran and he's won Super Bowls and he's got that cat. And I get he should. Yeah. He should be treated a certain way, but so should A.B. And again, Antonio Brown should not have done what he did. It, 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 it's to the point now where it's clear he's got to go. You got to you know do what you can do to trade him. It's just not working. I mean, you know what he did was a breach of a lot of different things within a team. But Ben Roethlisberger, for whatever reason, gets a lot of passes on some of the things that he does. You want to call out James Washington? You want to call out even Juju? You want to call out one of these younger guys? That's fine. But not. You don't you you give him the same respect that you deserve or you think you deserve, which he you know and he does because he's Ben Roethlisberger. I get that, but so does Antonio Brown. So to me, you know, he's getting a, a real easy free pass here. Ben is, and when you think about it, he's got to change some of his ways too. I mean, after that Denver game, he was quick to point the finger at everybody else. Well, you know what? Who was the guy that threw two interceptions that cost him the game? Really? So to me, I think that. Antonio Brown deserves the criticism he's getting, but by the same token, the stuff that started the whole thing and started him down this path after the Denver game, when Ben called him out on his radio show, we're not talking enough about that stuff. And to me, that's the biggest problem. All right, back out to the phone lines. Let's go out to Pete in Squirrel Hill. How you doing, Pete? Hello? Yeah, hey, Pete. Hello? Yeah, Pete, you there? Yeah, how you doing? Th- hey, how you doing tonight, guys? Happy New Year to you and your families. Thanks. Thanks a lot. But what I'm calling about is a, gen- a, a gentleman called last night to talk to Bob and Jean. Tony from the Hill District defending Antonio Bryan said he can understand his frustration because he's not targeted as much. He's jealous of his own teammate, Juju Smith. When you're jealous of your own teammate, you are not a team player. In the locker room, that means you are a cancer. Just somebody come out and say it, okay, and get rid of him because he's an imbe- He's a, not only a cancer, he is also a punk, okay? That's the way it is. All right. Hey, thanks a lot, Pete. I uh, <laughs> appreciate the call. I'm in that locker room a lot. A lot of the guys like Antonio Brown. I mean, he's sitting next to Vince Williams. He, he has a lot of friends in there. It doesn't look like, you know, he's, he's a bad influence in the locker room. Now, maybe some of the things that he's doing um, – I, I, not some, but, you know, some of these th- things that he's doing is definitely hurting this team. There's no question he's about that. He's a narcissist. That. He's selfish. He's a, at times a petulant child. But he's a diva. Yeah. And a lot of wide receivers are diva. The problem is, until this year, probably actually last year, you know, we, 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 we read about how he started in the AFC title game. He started running the wrong routes and stuff against the Patriots because he was upset with how they were using him, and there were some things that went on, you know, between him and Ben and all this other stuff. Really, he's it, it's not been till like, like the last year and a half, two years, that he started turning into where he's going down this path towards T.O. land, yeah. you know, which is just a, a team cancer that is incredibly talented, which T.O. was. He's in the Hall of Fame, but a team killer. And that's really where he's headed with all of this stuff that he's done over the last two years. You know, you could live with it when it was just him being, you know, uh, you know, him getting into these silly things, being late for stuff, yeah. you know, saying dumb things, his celebrations even. You could live with all this stuff. But when you start skipping stuff, when you start leaving your teammates hanging, when you start not calling your coaches back, now you're all of a not sudden. Not calling the owner not, back. Yeah, not calling the owner back. Now all of a sudden you're in, a, you're in a different category. And I think that's where he is, which is why, you know, as Mocking much as, Mike Tomlin, yeah, I and, mean, doing all these and, different and things. As much as I, and as much as I love A.B., uh, the player, I, I don't know how you keep him around at this point. I don't know if you can. I mean, it seems like this locker room potentially is divided almost yeah. now after what he's done and not going to practice and missing and skipping um, out and then wanting to come and, in and play. A must-win game, by the way. Yeah. A yeah. must-win game. That's the thing. It would be one thing if they were playing the Bengals. They already had the AFC North locked up, and they weren't going to, you know, they were going to play backups anyway. Okay. They had to win the game. They give themselves a chance to win the, to get to the playoffs. I think it says a lot that the team voted Juju Smith-Schuster as the MVP, unless that, that was somehow fixed. 
But I think it says a lot if the team actually voted him um, the MVP it, it over lot, Antonio Brown. It says a lot about uh, the quarterback. It, as also, well. you're right. You're right. But like, number three, there are a lot of people who are, you know, oh, it's ridiculous that the quarterbacks only won it once since 2009. Yeah. Well, that tells you a whole lot about what the teammates actually think about the quarterback beyond the fact that, well, he's a good player. All right, we got to take a break. Back with more of your phone calls, some of your tweets coming up next. Stay right there.